When a family is in charge of a country, personal issues become a matter of national concern, especially when it comes to fathers and sons. This is the case with Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, and his eldest son, General Muhuzi Kainarugaba. The president has been promoting his son in the army and overlooking some of his erratic behavior. Now, General Kainarugaba believes it's his turn to take over the top position. Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, who has held the presidency for more than 38 years, has made a controversial move by appointing his son as the top commander of the military. This decision has raised concerns among many in the country who have long suspected that Museveni is grooming his eldest child for the presidency. Kainarugaba, the son of President Museveni, was promoted to his new post late Thursday, according to a military statement. Two of his closest advisors have been given ministerial posts in a reshuffle of government ministers, also announced late Thursday, fueling speculation that Museveni supports Kainarugaba's political activities. President Museveni of Uganda has been in power since 1986, having been elected six times. There is no clear indication of when he intends to retire, and as there are no obvious successors within the ruling National Resistance Movement Party, many believe that the military will play a role in choosing his replacement. Observers note that Kainarugaba's allies are strategically placed in command positions throughout the security services. Museveni and Kainarugaba have previously denied any succession plan, but it appears that a transition is now underway. Museveni, who is 79 years old, is currently serving what may be his final term as president without any clear successor within the civilian government. Kainarugaba most recently served as a senior presidential advisor in charge of special operations, after having been removed from his post as infantry commander in 2022 by his father. At the time, Kainarugaba was responsible for a series of offensive tweets, including an unprovoked threat to capture the capital of neighboring Kenya. He had previously commanded an elite group of special forces tasked with protecting the first family. If you are curious about the origins of the current situation, allow me to provide some context. A few months ago, Muhuzi Kainarugaba, the son of the Ugandan president, made a bold statement expressing his frustration at the delay in his succession to the presidency. He asserted that he is tired of waiting and will soon take a stand on the matter. Muhuzi drew attention to the fact that the prime ministers of the United Kingdom and Finland are much younger than him, at 42 and 37 years old, respectively, while he is almost 50 and still waiting for his turn to become head of state. Muhuzi has made it clear that he sees himself as the rightful successor to his father's presidency. He has been vocal about his ambitions and has insisted that he must become the next president of Uganda. His assertive comments have raised concerns about the potential for a dynastic transfer of power in the country. Given Uganda's history of prolonged dictatorships, Muhuzi's ambitions spark a debate about the future of Uganda's democracy. Previously, Muhuzi, a high-ranking general in Uganda, declared that the only way he could make his mother prude was by becoming the president of Uganda. The only way I can repay my great mother is by being president of Uganda. And I will definitely do it, he stated firmly. Muhuzi sparked controversy by claiming that he was the country's next president-designate. He expressed his confidence that the opposition, led by musician-turned-politician Robert Kiagulanyi, also known as Bobby Wine, would never lead the country upon his father's retirement. Directly addressing the opposition, Muhuzi proclaimed, After my father, I will defeat you badly in any election. Ugandans love me more than they'll ever love you. This bold statement has only intensified the already tense situation between the ruling party and the opposition in Uganda. And on the other hand, Yoweri Museveni, the Ugandan president, was once hailed as one of the most promising leaders in Africa, standing in stark contrast to the infamous dictator Idi Amin, against whom he had led an insurgency. President Museveni's regime has become increasingly corrupt and autocratic as he has aged. The recent election in Uganda, which he used to secure himself a sixth consecutive term in office, was a complete mockery of democracy. It is apparent 
that President Museveni has become the very thing he fought against, as noted by Nigerian novelist and Nobel laureate Wolos Oyinka. To extend his rule, President Museveni pushed through a constitutional amendment that removed the age limit of 75 years for presidential candidates, despite being 76 years old himself. He also refused to accredit election observers from the United States and European Union, a practice that has been in place for decades. Over two dozen Ugandan monitors were arrested, further raising concerns about the fairness of the elections. In the days leading up to the election, President Museveni blocked Facebook, which had taken down many accounts used by the government to manipulate information and commentary about the vote. The day before the election, he completely shut down internet access throughout Uganda. The regime's most blatant actions were directed at Robert Kyagulanyi Sintamu, better known as Bobi Wine, a 38-year-old rapper turned political leader who was Mr. Museveni's principal opponent. During the campaign, Mr. Wine was arrested three times, along with at least 600 supporters at his rallies. His bodyguard was murdered, his lawyer was detained, and journalists who covered him had their accreditation revoked. Worst of all, when one of Mr. Wine's arrests led to street protests in November, security forces responded with gunfire, killing at least 54 people. The irony in Museveni's presidency is that since becoming Uganda's head of state, he has in many ways become increasingly similar to the authoritarian leaders that he once led rebellions against. With President Yoweri Museveni at the helm of the Ugandan government, it has come under fire for human rights violations, corruption, prosecution of opposition voices, and more authoritarian tendencies. Since Museveni first took office, the Ugandan constitution has been modified to abolish its presidential term limits and age limit so that Museveni can continue to stay in power. Approximately four decades ago, Yoweri Museveni contested an election that he believed to be rigged and corrupt. Following his unsuccessful bid for office, Museveni went on to lead the National Resistance Army in the successful overthrow of Milton Obote. This victory established Museveni as a symbol of progress and liberation, and his reputation was further bolstered by his role in the removal of Idi Amin. Despite high hopes for the new republic under his leadership, Museveni's regime has since been found to be authoritarian and repressive. Rather than promoting human rights and liberal democratic ideals, President Museveni has used his power to suppress dissent, silence opposition voices, and give himself more power. In addition to pressuring opposition leaders and protesters, Museveni's regime has also systematically targeted journalists and punished them for being critical of the regime. Journalists and authors face arrest, harassment, intimidation, and assault in reprisal for their work. Authorities routinely raid and shut down radio stations and other outlets and remove accreditation from journalists in retribution for their reporting, says Freedom House. According to Human Rights Watch, the Ugandan government has systematically arrested and beaten opposition supporters and journalists, killed protesters, disrupted opposition rallies, and limited internet access in accordance with its agenda. Protesters have even been arrested for treasonable acts of elements of the opposition. Despite the authoritarian nature and disregard for human rights that have become entrenched in Museveni's regime, he continues to portray himself as Uganda's political savior. President Yoweri Museveni has been in power in Uganda for several decades now, and while he has justified his tenure by stating that he has saved the country, the reality is far from that. The country continues to be entrenched in corruption, authoritarianism, and human rights crises, leading to concerns among both Ugandans and the international community. Despite Museveni's claims of saving the country, the situation on the ground appears to be quite the opposite. The Ugandan people are suffering under the weight of corruption and a lack of basic freedoms, with little hope for change on the horizon. The international community has also expressed concern about the state of affairs in Uganda, with many calling for greater action to be taken to address the human rights abuses that are taking place. Given these challenges, it is clear that Museveni's banana plantation is not bearing the kind of fruit that he claims it is. Instead, the people of Uganda are suffering under his rule, 
and it remains to be seen whether he will take the necessary steps to address the country's challenges and bring about the change that the people so desperately need. In any case, we would appreciate your valuable feedback on this matter. Please consider subscribing to our channel and liking and sharing our content. Additionally, we encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section below.